character. And we have to be consistent. So 845, we have to put our phones down. Yeah, but as parents, which we um, sometimes we don't all do. But, you know, as parents, we need to um, point, <laughs> don't point fingers at me. I'm not. You know, so, <laughs> see, see, don't, don't change this. You know what I'm saying? People, see, that's the problem. People need to worry about them. I put my phone down. You know, so I'm just saying, you need to worry about yourself. So I just think the more. <laughs> We stay see? focused. We stay I'm focused, glad you're saying. I'm just making stay sure you paying focused, attention. Because you know I can see the facial expression. For the people that's not on the radio, not seeing this, go to our YouTube channel. Okay, <laughs> Marriage Can Heal, and you can see how he acting over here. I'm not acting like anything. So, I just anyway, made a comment. But yeah, I just so made a anywho, comment. Anywho, a but, comment you know, that said, you know, okay. that, on the serious tip, you know, the world is really getting stronger and stronger about pushing their agenda on what they want our children to believe and what they want to learn, what they want to teach them and what they put in the schools and what they want to put into their minds, even started from a young age. Okay. And drop the beat now. Hello. Hello. <laughs> hello, hello, everybody. Hi, everyone. Just want to thank you for joining us today. My Mar- name is Pedro. My name is Tara. And this is the Marriage Can, Can Heal, Heal Podcast. Podcast. <laughs> well, you just got to copy me. Let me say it by myself. Because we say it together, we're a team. No, we are a team. All right. It's no I ain't team. Mm. <laughs> Kobe Bryant did say something about that one time. <laughs> <laughs> It's not. He did. He said there was an eye in it, but I'm not gonna say what he said. Really, what's the eye at? <laughs> I'm gonna leave that alone. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Please um, don't say so crazy. Well, say what crazy? I'm not saying nothing crazy. <laughs> we want to thank everybody for joining us. Yes. <laughs> we want to apologize. We have not been consistently on lately. Mm-hmm. Lots been going on with the summer coming up. Yes. And we've been um, going through some sickness and health. Also, we've been going through just busy just work. Life. Been, yeah, just life. life. Things been really busy lately. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, we are we're almost to that pinnacle of, you know, no. giving up sometimes and keep yeah. going, mm-hmm. pushing through even when we don't want to. True. One thing I've learned, like I said before, doing a podcast is not easy. It takes a lot. It, it takes does. a lot. It takes a lot for both. Mm-hmm. It's a commitment, you know. And so we definitely. Are trying to stay committed. We have our moments. Mm-hmm. Like as we, as people say, we're transparent, so we do have our moments. We do. Today was one of those moments. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, want, you can smile all you want. <laughs> you know, you uh, thought I wanted to give up, <laughs> but it's wanted... okay. You know, we here now, and oh no, I mean, we can. Talk, I'm. Look, we transparent. We talk about everything, so why not talk about it? Mm. Right. Yeah. Okay. You want to start? Yeah, let's go. I'm saying you want to start talking about it. Yes, what? You're not even. Oh, do I want to start talking about how it? How we almost didn't, how we, if we didn't do it tonight, we wasn't, you was talking about not doing it no more ever again. Yeah, I was. I was like, if you ain't going to come back downstairs so we can, you know, do the podcast today, then you might as well hang it up because I'm not going to do it. Oh, but don't, don't make it seem like it was me because it was both of us. Okay, I'm just saying. Don't, don't say because I walked away for the moment it means like I was the one giving up. Because mm. I wasn't giving up. I just needed a breather. Okay. Because you was irritating me. All I said was. No, you was, no, 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 I say you, all you said was anything. You was irritating me. And you know you was irritating me. You <laughs> oh was pushing gosh. my buttons. Well, you say, oh, see, that's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, right. No, you know, okay. Okay, what? Nothing. Even when you text me, if you notice in the text, I didn't say you, I said we. We. Did you notice that? But then when no, you, I didn't. I didn't but then notice when you, the we. But then when you came back, you was like, you. <laughs> I was like, hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Sorry about the yarning. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Okay. But yeah. Anyway. Yeah. 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 That's why I just want to point that out. Mm-hmm. So you know. But we back on. You know, we back on track. Are we? Hopefully. I think we are. God willing. God willing. God is always in control. Always. So mm-hmm. yeah. So, Anywho. Yeah. Anywho. What? Anywho. That's it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And it's who that's it. Um, I'm trying to look up the the what I put because yours. What? 
Cause blame you, me again. I'm not I'm blaming anything. The not, blame. See, see, that's the thing. I'm not. It's both of us this time. It's not just. I'm not blaming you. See, okay. we we talk about that in our marriage. It's not when you're in a marriage is equal. Okay. We talked about this before. Mm -hmm. Like with the abuse, we said it was be like you or I, but it wasn't just you or I. It was us. Right. We both had a part in it, and right. in this situation. We both had a part in it. We did. We had a we had a disagreement. You know, sometimes when you close marry, to a, you... close to being an argument, right? Yeah, and almost we was there. both. We was both. We was almost. We there. was both at fault. It wasn't just me. It wasn't just you. Okay, fine. I'll take you was pushing my buttons. Yes. I let you push my buttons. <laughs> oh, but it is the truth. You even said it when it came downstairs. You said, "I know I was pushing your buttons." I did. So you was pushing my buttons. I was. And I let you, and I let you get the best of me because it, it's natural. We're all human. We make mm -hmm. mistakes. That's how marriage works. That's true. But we can come back. We can talk about it. And as we tell people, we do use this podcast to heal ourselves. We do. As we try to also use it to heal others. That's true. So we have to be transparent mm -hmm. and let people know. Because you know, situation. there's people. You yeah. know, there's people out there that see us doing this. That oh, they think they perfect. No, we never say we perfect. Oh, we far. From we far perfect. from perfect. Trust me. Far. Trust me, it's been times where we've done podcasts, we've been irritated with each other. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's been this times we've done. This is about to be one of them. This yeah, is about this, to be well, one this of them. Well, about to be the last one, according to you. Yeah, because I was like, you know what? You ain't going to come downstairs. Then, you know what? This going to be it. I'm done with Marriage Can Heal. Why would you be done? See, that's the thing. You're because not supposed to give up. I, I, I wasn't initially. No, no, no. You were giving up. See, that's I, I was, what I'm saying. Was, you, well, I, because you're I giving felt a like wrong and you're giving a wrong impression only to because, our listeners. Only because, um, you know, fine. He was in his feelings. I was in my feelings. I wasn't in my feelings. Anyway, the point is, I was like, if you ain't gonna come back downstairs so we can do this um podcast, then it's gonna be the same. You know, don't worry about doing no more. I said that. Was I in my feelings? Maybe so. No, you wasn't. You know, but the point. <laughs> but whatever. Yeah, you was in your feelings, but that's whatever. cool. Like I said, I was not in my feelings. I was just irritated, and we're allowed to be irritated sometimes. We are. We're it's not okay scared. in a marriage to be irritated, folks. It's okay to get into your feelings. It's okay to <laughs> not agree or agree to disagree. Yeah, agree to disagree. Mm. It's how you handle it. That's true. That's true. I think we handle it well. That's how you come out of it. I don't think we um we harpered on it. You know, the point that the point that we hear right now, it, that's the main thing, right? I hope so. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah, we we you know bigger people. It's not about being bigger people. It's no, what I'm saying is that we, yeah, uh, yes, what I'm saying we 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 we. So you trying to say you're the bigger it. person because you no you no said I said first? that we that's working you're going through with it. it. Mm. No, and like, it's like we get brownie points. That's what it sounded like to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't that. Anyway. Anyway. Anywho. Anywho. So what? Did, so 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 much is going on. So much happened lately. With Why are you trying me. to change the subject? Because we 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 moving on. We're not staying on it, right? I'm not staying on it. Okay. But I'm just saying you just uh, you just like you see because you just trying to you know I right, end of that. Let's go. <laughs> I was just saying let's just okay move on next topic. So the thing is so late this recently right babe mm -hmm. I went to France. I went yeah. to Perry. Yeah. You know, so I was really excited. My husband um, treated me on going to Paris. And also, I had an opportunity to sing in ministry with Pastor Ray and um, the team. What's the team called? Oh, Talking Point. Oh, sorry, guys. How you don't remember the name? I just remember. So anyway, Talking Point. And so we was all there in, in um, France. Um, he was on a revival for the week. Um, and we was there. We came later on and we had an opportunity to see a lot of different people and and um, you know just listening to a different language other than what we used to and it was quite interesting you know to meet different people and how you can also you can connect with people even though you may not always understand exactly what they are saying so anyway I just I'm just glad I had that chance and opportunity to see a different side of how the world is and people okay yeah so yeah, it was really good. I had the chance to go to the Eiffel Tower, take a picture and everything, and I saw the pyramid. Um, I can't, I don't know if this exact name, but I did see the pyramid that was there. It was, I think it's like an art. Um, I wasn't there, so I don't know. Thing, but yeah, so we had opportunity to see all of that, and and you got to connect with the Talking Point team. Yeah, I had a chance to connect because you with normally don't some, get to connect. I, most times, I always go by myself. Yeah, I connected with some wonderful ladies. And um, I must admit, I had a really good time. Yeah. 
you know, the funny thing about <laughs> the hotel was really nice, but right at top, right, right at the end, I swear to you, the toilet had broke, but it wasn't me. Mm. You know, say so I wasn't sure. sure. I wasn't, I wasn't sure what was mm. going on with the toilet. But the whole thing was, was jumping up and down on the it. wall. You, you know? jumping up and down on it. Just that wasn't that. me. That yes, wasn't me. Was. But anyway, I you was, was doing the classic woman thing, you know, where they squat. <laughs> no, I wasn't doing that. <laughs> but anyway, you don't want to put your butt on the on the um the toilet seat <laughs> booty. But um, I said butt. Okay, I just had a different name. But it was gotta be different. I know. Why, why it was gotta be different. so difficult? I'm different. Yes, but, you um, are. Yeah, I just had a good time. I had a chance to see um friends i would i really wish i had a chance to stay a little bit longer to see a little bit more but i hopefully i get an opportunity next time i don't know if i'm gonna take you because you irritate me too much now <laughs> but I may yeah leave you, i may leave you there but you know i at first you'll I was, wake up one morning i'll be gone <laughs> first Peace. i was a little um like um i think they'll understand me you know what you know when i sing in english but they understand me quite well cause, because they actually sing a couple of songs in English, and even though I knew them, you know, as they was they playing, were singing like, in English and French. Yeah, they, they would start to, off in English and then start, start and then sometimes they'll start the in, in 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 the, um English and then they'll end in French and then they'll start in French and in English. It just depends, mm -hmm. but um, it was uh, I like how they was just changing it up, which was really helped us because we used to like, oh, okay, so they right here, they right there, so they really did help us, you know, follow along in the service that we didn't feel like we was all alone. But we did have interpreters, which was really nice. And that was really, sometimes the interpreter was like, oh, they said this. And I'm like, dude, you late. They've been saying that. So other than that, it was good. Mm. And then I also said, like I said to you, I think it was good for you to connect because <clears throat> like you ever have friends or you ever have people that you um, deal with mm -hmm. and the other, the other party doesn't have a chance to really meet them. They meet them right. like on Zoom or something like that, which you have, right. but it's not that connection. Yeah, it's a difference. It's a different connection, but once mm -hmm. you get to meet them in person, spend time with them. Well, it's uh, different when I you spend saying, time with someone physically. Right, that's why I said, that's why I wanted you to go, because I was like, mm -hmm. you know what, you can get a chance to get to know them, they can get to know you, mm -hmm. and you can see the difference already, because now when you talk about each other, you talk about each other in a sense of knowing each other. Yeah. You know, as before, like, it would just be like, oh, you know, say hi to the wife. Right. <laughs> Whereas now is say hi to Tower for us. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's a difference. They yeah. say is a di you even say, Oh, you know, say hi to Angela and Zenya for me. Yeah, it was you just know, kind of like us a say hello. Thing. Yeah. You know, well before it'd be like you wouldn't even say like, you know, you say, Oh, you know, say hi for me. Yeah. But now it's like you you're like on a first name basis. Yeah. Yeah. Which is good. And that's the difference. And that's yeah. what I wanted. That's why I was like, because I could have went. Mm -hmm. But I was like, you know what? You don't get to get out the house. You don't get to go nowhere. It's been what five years since you have you've had a break. You've been dealing with the kids. I I get breaks. I get to go for work. I go away for a couple of days. I've gone away. I think at one point for like two months, I was going away every week, wasn't I? Mm -hmm. So I was going away for two three days a week, going down south, going to Scotland. You know, so I get a I get a break. So I was mm -hmm. like, you know, let's give my wife a break and let her go and enjoy herself. Yeah. You know, you did a lot of walking though, but yeah. You know, and but I listen, think but you, and you said the food was wasn't that good. Crazy, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. I mean, it you, wasn't you thought it was like going to be like Kyrie. I did. I, I guess I had a different thing, but it was okay. That's but it. That's I all I can say about it. I just wanted to give something, you know, give something to you, give you a chance to, you know, just have some time to yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, just you know, relax. It was fun. It felt a little weird at first, and then as time went on, it was good. I bet you do it again next time without thinking about it. I would. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think we should do it like it a did, it did feel kind of weird. Um, All right, that's fine. That's fine. Trip thing. Hey, listen, peace out. I always tell you, I want you to have friends so you can leave me alone. <laughs> I yeah, always tell nice. you that I like the break. You know, the kids were a little. It was weird for us at home, right? Because like you used to having I, yeah, like, all the time, right? So it's like I'm I'm sitting in the house and I'll go to say to myself like, oh, I need to go tell, and I'm like, oh wait, she's not here, right? <laughs> Like, you know, because yeah. I'm so used to you being here. So it's like, oh, hey, I can go tell her. Oh, I need to tell her. And then, oh, hey, she's not here. So it's like, it was kind of weird. Mm -hmm. The kids felt, it felt weird for the kids too. It I did. even think the kids went through a little bit of um, separation anxiety because I swear they didn't eat much while you was gone. Yeah, it could, it could have been. We was down to like two, we would have a big breakfast about 11. Mm -hmm. Then we, I'll cook them dinner about five. And mm -hmm. it was good. They wasn't even eating the snacks like normal. Like when you came home, the snacks was the back, the cabinet was full. 
because they wasn't really eating the snacks and the fruits or nothing. They wasn't just eating anything. I had to like try to make them. They wasn't eating nothing. Yeah. But as soon as you step foot, thing, you soon know, as you step foot in that door, <laughs> the appetites came. They back. was like, "Ooh, can I have more? That that's not enough." I'm like, "Wait a minute! I've been giving you this all for the last couple of days." Mm-hmm. Because I think I gave him a lot the first day. And it's like, oh, that's too much, Dad. I'm just yawning. Mm-hmm. So I, I start giving him little, you know, little portions right. or smaller portions. And then they, I mean, yeah, so I definitely think they have like a separate anxiety. Yeah, they probably didn't go through that. Because mommy always here, you know? Yeah, it's daddy that leaves. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. But, um, yeah, so our topic today, we're going to be talking about Christian values in the home, which is season three, episode 15. Oh, you forgot to put that. Mm-hmm. Good job, they're sitting. No. And also, you know, please support our podcast. Yes, please. Like and subscribe. Mm-hmm. Um, and for the radio, please keep listening every Sunday at four o'clock on the Vintage Radio London. That's right. So we're on. The, you can go on the app. It's a Vintage Radio London, mm-hmm. and you can um, just click, and at four o'clock, and you hear our voice. You may not see our picture because it's a different picture in the app. Yeah. But they need to are, upload a new one yeah, on there. Yeah, they need to upload the new picture. But that's yeah. here or now. That's a whole other <laughs> subject. I just throw that in there. Yeah, we would let that go right now. But we would, <laughs> you know, we definitely are on there. Yeah. We also have other shows. Like we do We do also have Talking Point, which is on every Sabbath evening between 5 and 7. Mm-hmm. We have the Ray of Hope show that comes on at 10 Some to 12. Yeah, 10. Yeah. Right. And then we have the morning show from 7 to 9, which is the breakfast show. Mm-hmm. I'm going to rent this video London with Pastor Ray, Josephine, and Paul Lee. Mm-hmm. And the way I hope is Pastor Ray, of course. And then, of course, ours is at 4 o'clock, the marriage can heal. Yep. We also have In the News, um, which I can't remember where it's at, when it's on. Is it, It's on Sunday, I think. Oh, it's on Sunday before um, Talking Point. Yeah. So I believe it's on Sunday morning. This is UK time. So this is UK time, everybody. Yeah. That may be in the US that may be listening to our youtube video mm-hmm. um this is a vintage video london that you can listen to all these different shows good christian um shows shows that you can listen to mm-hmm. uh mostly some music some talking things of that nature yeah. news we even have um cooking business all right it's a cooking show isn't yeah it? we have a cooking show we do have a business show we have a kids program the yeah. brixton kids mm-hmm. so we have a bunch of different shows so yeah so I just wanted to point that out because we never really have pointed that out. Well, and also, since I have this up on the screen here, you can contact us at marriage can heal podcast at gmail.com. And if you want to donate to our ministry, you can donate to our cash app, which is pound marriage can heal too, or our PayPal at goddess ministry. Our PayPal at goddess ministry. And you can, yeah, donate to us over there. Yes, we're not immune to that. So <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> we do use it to upgrade. That's right. I don't know if you guys have noticed. Well, on the YouTube, we have, we had one set, we did it one way, then we changed. Now we changed to a different setting. Mm-hmm. So that's because we're upgrading our equipment and upgrading our setting and everything. We just still, we still want to come do a couple more things um, different. But of course it takes money. So in time, God will bless us and we'll be able to in time. So with the subject of Christian values, we was just, lately I've been just thinking a lot. And the other day I had a thought in my head and I was saying to the wife that, you know, I think that we have lived in different places in the world. Yeah. So we lived in the States. Well, of course, because you come from Alabama. Yeah. I lived in New York. Then we moved to Bermuda. Mm -hmm. Then we moved to the UK. And I was just thinking about all the different ways that our upbringing or even the way we've been upbringing our kids has affected them and affected us. Yeah. And I just thought it would be good to talk about that in a marriage. Mm Because in a marriage, kids is a very important part of the marriage. And in our marriage, we have been through a lot, um, good and bad, and we've been through a lot with our Christianity. Right. Even testing our faith. Yeah. As of, like, this evening. Mm Mm-hmm. So... With that in mind, I I just wanted to bring up. Well, I know we're about to have the coronation. All right. For the king. What was it? It was today. Yeah. And yeah. So, yeah, it's on. It's on Saturday. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to um. 
I just thought it was interesting because, you know, you I didn't, of course, we didn't look at it because it's the Sabbath. Right. Um, and I don't plan to look at it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did notice some things before that. And that was just what got me thinking was how people are like flocking down there to see just to get a glimpse or just to um, to see the king and the queen in their um, motorcade or whatever they're in. Right. I don't know if they're in buggies or if they're in cars. I don't know because I haven't looked at it. Right. And it just got me thinking about how our children, I don't know why it got me thinking about this, but it got me thinking about how our kids in our house, we worship God. Right. We believe in Christ, Jesus Christ. We believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Right. And how we teach our kids every day. And I guess... What you know actually really got me thinking about it when we was the other day when you was away. No, when I was away actually, because mm-hmm. right before you went to Paris, I had to go to Colchester, right? And we was having worship, and I was on Facetime, mm-hmm. and Kaya started to talk, and she went on for five minutes talking about God, how much she loves him, mm-hmm. how much um he means to her, mm-hmm. the things that he does for her, you know that. You know, she understands that he's there for her and anything when she's down, when she's out, she can trust on God to bring her out of it. I mean, it was just to hear an eight year old talk as eloquent as she was about it just had me thinking about it. I think you even start crying, if I remember correctly. I did because, you know, it 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 lets me know that she's actually listening, she's taking it in, she's retaining what were you teaching her about Jesus. And, you know, that means a lot, you know, not only to me, I'm sure Jesus is pleased with it. And ever since she'd been baptized or even before then, she was very interested. But I would say after she'd been baptized, I think it really just sealed it for her. And she was, you know, she's been growing. And I I see that, you know, in all of our children. But I definitely seen it in in her, um, you know, that time in worship. And I think they also noticing it even more at school as well. Because lately she's been saying, you know, how they've been talking about, because, you know, Eve been happening and, you know, all the different things that have been going on. And Easter had passed, so they was talking about that. And she had told me about how a gentleman had came into the school and was talking about Christianity because um, she goes to a Muslim school. My youngest daughter, our youngest daughter goes to a Muslim school. And they don't teach about... Um, oh, no, wait. It's not a Muslim school. It's a, it's a regular school, but it's just mostly Muslims in the school. Okay, well, because they don't they don't teach Muslim, they don't teach Islam. They don't teach Islam. Right. Oh, okay, they teach the they teach the British because I want to make sure you make that clear because the Muslim school actually is a Muslim school. Yeah. Okay, I got you. Because they, got, got, you. they, got, they, got, they got they got they got Islam school. They got schools, a lot of Muslims. Right. And, the school is right. is is predominantly Asian. Mm-hmm. Where they call them here Asian, mm-hmm. but that's why I wasn't trying to correct. I was just trying to make you understand that. Yeah, yeah that's fine. That's fine. That is definitely is a is all majority Asian. Yes. And they talk so about they, they leave different... early on Friday mm-hmm. so they can go to they can go to mosque mm-hmm. things of that nature. So anyway, she's been learning about the different um, you know religions in school, and they also touched on Christianity for a while. I think I did for a week. So I did I did a week of Christianity one time, and I did a week of Islam, and they were just talking about different um, religions overall. And um, her point was to me that she mentioned to me was that you know how they don't believe in Jesus, but they believe in God. So I think she was a little like, if you believe in God, you have to believe they didn't believe in Jesus, right? But for them, they don't believe initially in Jesus. They don't believe that, right? No, they believe in Jesus. They just believe that Jesus was a prophet. Right, they believe Jesus was a prophet. They don't believe that he came from God, though. No, they believe he was a prophet because they believe, they think their saying is that, why would God allow Jesus to go through all the rough and the tumble things, the to die, to pretty much die a violent death like he did? Mm-hmm. They can't, they don't understand that. But that's that's what I was saying. Like with the Christianity, we we you know we 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 I would say being in the UK has been the hardest struggle for us as parents in the Adventist faith because we do. The, as we had the discussion before, we do define as Eventus, Seventh Day Eventus. Yes, <laughs> as you say, you don't. But anyway, we're not going to go back to that anyway. subject anyway. But we do define the Seventh Day Eventus because as Seventh Day Eventus, we believe in a certain. We have certain beliefs that we believe in. 
as all, as some Christians, but we have Pacific, we have a health message, we have um, the three angels message, we have Daniel Revelation, we have, you know, those different messages of that nature and so on. So it's been hard in the UK because as I always say, working out, like just me working outside um, every day, visiting other people, mm-hmm. um, they don't, we don't really they don't really talk about Christianity or talk about Christ in any form of matter, even though there is like the church of England here and Catholic and Adventist, like, um, you know, the other day I was driving and I actually saw the Adventist church and I was like, wow, oh, cool. And Adventist church. Cause don't even notice them. Um, really as I drive around that well, much. The Catholic do the Catholic religion. Um, they believe in Mary, right? They believe in praying to the Mary. Right. They but don't believe not, in God. No, we're not we're not going on the cat no i'm just not, saying I'm i know just, i know I'm, but no, we're but not I, up, so I just no up. i wasn't just i'm not bringing that for that i'm talking about just in the sense of just like i was saying in worship this evening mm-hmm. there's like if i go out right now and i walk around my neighborhood right like growing up in in bermuda maybe going up bermuda because it's so small mm-hmm. you can you can sense the different churches in the neighborhood Whereas like here, like even here, a lot of these churches are abandoned. You, though they're not even churches anymore. They are now like homes for for the homeless or, you know, like help centers or, or something. Or something. Yeah, not really a business. They're more like a help center, like a shelter. Right. They don't really like. There's a there's a couple of churches that are in this neighborhood that they don't use them as churches anymore. Mm. So my point is that like you don't get that. Well, I guess well, to me, you don't get that Christianity Christianity feel. You don't get that feel of of a church in the neighborhood when you walk around in the U to me over here up here in the UK where mm-hmm. we live. Mm-hmm. Maybe a little further south because there's more churches. There's Adventist churches. There's Baptist churches. Pentecostals. There's other you know different churches, and you see them. But it's like here, I just don't. I, I was just noticing like you don't really see them or feel it's like. I, it's hard to explain. Like I, just, I know what you mean. I, 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 can I really feel do it. believe like, because we more up north. It's just not like it's not just not. It's just not like that in in this area. Like when we live in the south, we could be driving down the street and you'll see the Baptist church. Oh, right. okay. You, you know, you could. You know, it's just they don't. They don't. I almost feel like sometimes they worship other things more than they do Christ here. Mm-hmm. Is what I'm pretty much saying mm-hmm. in the UK. Right. Um, you know, they worship the king and the queen. They worship, you know, the prime minister. They worship, you know, each other. They worship, you know, just other plain things. and simple. No, let's get real. Trying, they worship gay, lesbian rights and those things of that nature. They just worshiping other things but Christ. Right. I just get that, just that feel, just the honest feel I get. It's more worldly. You know, it's more like I'm going to do what I want to do. Because that's my right, right, which is your right. It is your right, but you just get that feel here to me. Yeah, and that's why you know when we have a worship at home with our children, that's why I really do believe in, in worship in the home. I really do believe setting those Christian values for your children, putting the word in them, so they as they get older they won't apart from it. The Bible says that um, train up a child on where it is to go, and they won't part from it as they get older. And I really do believe if we instill that in them. And as we see that they are retaining what we're teaching them about Jesus, then you know we 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 see that where what God is saying. You know yeah, because um, I that's a fair mind because I know I left the church for a while, mm-hmm. and I was brought up in the church, and um, yeah. I um I think that I noticed that. I guess what got me going was the other day. Not even got me going. What got me thinking was. I saw somebody I know, and I was like, "Wow, I never would have thought they would have like they they changed their appearance some, and not in a bad way, mm-hmm. you know." And I was like, "Wow, the way they was brought up, you would never thought they would be they would change their appearance in that way." And it just it didn't shock me, but I was just like, "Hmm, interesting," and it just got me thinking, like you know, if our children, you know, but in as we know too, God God does say that. You raise a child, it says raise a child up as they come and in the way of God and they will not leave. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't mean that they're going to, you know, we can raise our children to the best of our abilities, but at some point they become their own. Yeah. 
So once they become their own, then we've done our part, and now it's up to them to keep their part going. So they have to, you know, it has to be what they um they learned mm-hmm. or what they want to do. Because I I know I know this a lot, especially um on my some of my Facebook friends or acquaintances that people that was brought up in the church have now totally gone away. And I was even thinking about we was talking about this too, like. Even like in in family, there's not much. There's not many Adventists in my family anymore. Mm. It Even wasn't really own, that many Adventists in your family. We have more, but I mean, like you know, like we grew up, you know, with my father, and my mother being married, and then, you know, the sisters and the brothers. It's just me and two others that are now Adventists, mm. and the whole is like ten of us, or right. maybe th- four. So, but like less than half. When we was all eventers when we was growing up. Yeah. So that's what I mean by like, you know, so it does happen. And so I just think our, our duty as parents is just to keep teaching our, our children about Christ, teaching them about God and letting God do the rest and just let it be. Mm-hmm. Once they hit a certain age, then it's on them to make that decision to keep, you know, I mean, you know, one thing we have to, you know, realize as parents is that as our children get older, they're going to experience the world for themselves. Mm -hmm. They're going to they're going to start, you know, doing things and seeing things and they're going to have to make their own mistakes. But, you know, and they're going to have to learn from those things. And hopefully when they go on through those situations, they can remember what we have taught them and how they can navigate through those hard times. with allowing God to, you know, help them when they're going through. But that's what I was going to say was that I think that even though our children have had a hard time adjusting to the school, especially um, the two oldest, Mm -hmm. I think that that actually has been a blessing in disguise because it's taught them. We're teaching them at home one way. They go to school, they're learning a totally different way. And they're learning and they're being subjected to worldly things that, even we can't even explain sometimes because the world has changed. So even some of the stuff we grew up with is different now as um, children. Mm-hmm. Children is much more with social media, definitely internet. More exposed to more is stuff. more exposure. So mm-hmm. our children are being exposed now as we growing up was probably not exposed right away or wasn't really put out in the forefront like it is now. Yeah. You know, the best thing that I, I love about our children is that they actually come and communicate, you know, what they have been through, how they day have went, and you know, whatever had had whatever had happened within that day or week or whatever, they'll sit and talk and be open with, with you know with us and talk to us. And that's one thing I love, you know. And I don't force it out of them. I just be like, Oh, you just you just keep asking them. <laughs> no, no, that's not true. That's not true. I know, just that's not you. true, Pedro. I'm t- I, okay, so th- I'm pushing your button right now. Okay, All right. <laughs> okay, there you go. But, um, you don't you don't like it, do you? No, it ain't about not liking it. It's mm. just let me get back to my point, please. So what I was saying was, well, I was really interrupted, was that our children are gonna come and talk to me and you know, the, I asked them the first thing they come in the door, how was your day? What happened? Anything interesting or anything you want to talk about, you know? And they feel free to talk. So and it's funny because depending on who start first, they like I'm, I'm gonna go first, and so you know, one child will start, and then after, after I think they finish, then if they wait, I'm not done, and the other ones are talking. So they they very um willing to share the things that they have gone through, and most times if they going through something, I can pretty much kind of tell like if like something pinching them. I was like, what's up? What's going on? You know, you're acting different. What's going on? Something happened at school. Somebody did something to you or whatever, and then they will end up talking. They play, like, mom, what you think? You think? You know, what would you do? Type of situation. And then in turn, I'd be like, well, when, since you went through that, what do you think you should do or you think you should, you know, go through with the situation or whatever, whatever it may be, you know, and it's always some. And I'm one thing I have noticed there's a lot of drama going on now lately with kids, especially the old two, older two. So it's a lot of drama going on with, you know, their peers and things like that. So, you know, just talking them through through that, just making sure that they're not really, you know, going through something that. I don't know about, you know, and not that our children, I don't know, maybe they don't tell me everything, but I think, they know. but I think for me, you know, I think if it was something that we really needed to know, I think that we will know. That 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 is true. I don't think they say everything because yeah. I told you this before, even us as married couples don't say everything. Mm-hmm. We say a lot, 
But it's still some things that we just don't say. But I'm sure, you know, at the, but like I said. Because I, it's human I think nature. If, yeah, but I because, think if it was something that we really needed to cap on. Right, and to talk, talk about, to them about right, then it would be it, done. Yeah, it would be and done. And so I was thinking about that part because we was, the other day I was saying, you were saying while you was away, did they really talk to me? And I was like, yeah, they kind of talked to me. But as soon as you got back, then they was talking more. And I think they got into this habit. I I thought about it, and I really think they got into this habit of they talk to you about stuff because you're the first person they see when they get home. Right. So they're used to talking to you because most times I'm still at work. Yeah. Then they don't really talk to me because when I get home, you know, they come give me a hug. Hey, Dad, how you doing? How was work? I tell them how work was. Okay, cool. And then they go about their business. I think part of the reason is because they know that you're going to come and tell me anyway. Yeah, probably so. I Sky, think that's Sky what it will, is. Sky will come and say it to me again because Sky, she liked to hear she liked talk. she liked to hear <laughs> talk. Yeah, so Sky will come yeah. and tell me again how her day went. Yeah, and she'll just that girl can work your nerves because she she'll procrastinate and she'll take like, like five she, minutes. She, she, Listen, she I'm, not I'm not she complaining. I'm not complaining. And not, I love it. Can I finish, do... please? I'm not complaining. I'm saying okay. she just takes five minutes to get to the first to the point to get yeah. to to get started. You know, like Sky, just just tell me already, please. You know, just tell me already. But yeah. anyway, yeah, finish um, up, finish up. Yeah. So I think, especially like even with Junior, because even though I know, like he does, he'll come and talk to me. But I think a lot of times because he knows that you tell me anyway, he's like, well, if I tell Mom, she'll tell Dad. He'll know. Then if Dad is concerned, Dad will come and talk to me. Mm. I think that's the way the dynamic is working with us. That's yeah. and honestly, when I really think about it, yeah. Because if it's yeah, something, yeah, if it's yeah. something that is that needs to be discussed, I'll go and I'll say, "Hey, I talked to your mom. This and this, and then he'll talk to me. Mm-hmm. So, but he won't come directly to me and talk to me. Right? You okay Which, with that? I'm fine with that because, like I said, it's the dynamic that we have because of the fact that um, you're the first person he sees every time since he's been born. You're the first person he sees every time. Mm-hmm. So it's just it's just something it's just a routine it's just the way it's worked out, mm-hmm. but it doesn't really bother me, mm-hmm. you know, because um, some things that he talks about needs to be handled or talked about right then, mm-hmm. and since you're home, you can handle it right then. Right. Um, if he had to wait till one of us got home from work, it may be a different um, conversation, or he may not be as truthful in the conversation because. He had time to think, or he may overthink and say, "Oh, I don't really need to say this. I don't really need to say that." I think by him, by just getting right home and then seeing you, they they automatically just say how they're feeling right then and there because they don't have time to think. Mm-hmm. You know, I think children sometimes have a chance. As adults, we have a tendency sometimes to overthink and be like, "Oh, should I really say this or should I not say that?" Well, I can see that because you if know? you if you if you're thinking about something and if you got someone right there at that moment where you can kind of feed off of and kind of throw this, like, look, I'm thinking this or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, or this is the situation, then you'll get a different, you won't have time to really sit and think about how you can change your whole mind about what you just, what you will say about this. So I get that. Yeah. And then I would. I get that. Yeah. Totally. And so while I was with the whole subject, what we're talking about, I was talking about the Christian values. So we, we try to have worship every evening. Mm-hmm. We don't always have it every evening. It's a weird thing. I think when the kids are on vacation, I think we all get kind of lax and we sometimes lag on doing worship in the evening. It may not be as as long, but we do pray together. No, I know we pray together, but I'm not saying, but I'm talking about like when school is in, we have more of a tendency to sit down and have a discussion. Mm -hmm. When the kids are out of school, we have more of a tendency to sit down and pray. Mm-hmm. we may have a quick two minute discussion or something and sit and pray. But when school is in, we tend to talk longer or mm-hmm. have more of a discussion. Don't know why it's just the way it is. We, we, and so sometimes we, we always pray every evening before we go to bed. That's, we're going to do that. If we don't do anything else, we pray with our children because mm-hmm. we want them to, to recognize, you know, to pray to God in the morning when they wake up and pray before they go to bed. We mm-hmm. also tell them even after we have our worship, and you're about to go to sleep, you should still say a little prayer to God. Right. Um, Because we're trying to invoke, we're trying to invoke or trying to instill in them the Christian values that was instilled, well, in me as a young person. Well, and And to also let them know that prayer is how you communicate with Jesus. Right. But I'm saying, and how you was growing up, Mm -hmm. even though it was Baptist, you still have Christian values, Mm -hmm. even Mm -hmm. as a Baptist, Mm -hmm. that was taught, you know, to pray 
and things of that nature. Yeah. Um, I just, we, I guess the whole the thing of it was just talking about how difficult it is and how we just, just to tell people that I'm married or even people that are single or anybody listening to the podcast or to the uh, radio station that, you know, if you have a certain belief, if you have a belief in God to keep, to keep pushing through and just keep teaching your kids and keep telling your kids about Christ mm -hmm. and to keep, you know, instilling in them, even if, cause like, even for me, when we had worship, like I grew up when we had worship, it was quiet. It was reverent. It was, you know, nobody, everybody sat still, everybody sat up right, put your feet on the floor, sit up straight, boom, you know. And today's today's world is not as, it's different. And yeah. I used to get real mad. I used to get upset and I used to get real mad. But then I realized that, I guess what I, was, what I guess I'm saying is that from listening from what Kaya, and even what Sky was saying the other day, I realized that even if they don't, every child, children are different now in the way they process stuff. Yeah, the generation. So we had, you know, we sat still, but even when like, cause guy likes to bite on her fingernails or play with something, you know, has something in her fingers while we having worship. Kaya sometimes doesn't look like she's paying attention at all. You know, <laughs> but she we doesn't. see that she is. But I'm saying, but yeah, but that's my point. Like, don't just keep, just keep talking about it. We, we talk about, be Christ, consistent, yeah. We be consistent. We're consistent. We're we're constantly, and we're constantly telling them our Christian values. We're constantly telling them about Christ and God and how much He loves us and how much He was there for us. And you know, sometimes it can be hard for parents, especially if they own relationship with Jesus is not where it needs to be. Yeah. So if their their personal relationship with Jesus is not strong and they're not praying and they're not being consistent with with what they need to be consistent with Jesus, and there's no way they're going to filter that down to their children because they're not doing it for themselves. That's true too. So, so we have to be consistent, you know, on our own personal relationship and then share that with our children. That's true. So they can see that, oh, okay, you know, so they know that we're going to be consistent with because they always ready. Like I, they know at a certain time we're going to have worship and they're going to get themselves together. So I think we, we need to work on that as individuals. Even though they push that envelope too sometimes because right. they know 845, phones are off. Right, yeah, they give push you a chance, it. You 15 know, minutes, kids. yeah, tell them, give you, give you guys a chance. Uh, and we have to be consistent. So 845, we have to put our phones down. Yeah, but as parents, Which we um, sometimes we don't all do. But, you know, as parents, we need to um, point, <laughs> don't point fingers at me. I'm not. You know, so, <laughs> see, see, don't, don't change this. You know what I'm saying? People, see, that's the problem. People need to worry about themselves. I put my phone down. You know, so I'm just saying you need to worry about yourself. So I just think the more we stay see? focused. Yeah. We need to stay I'm focused, glad you're saying you know, I'm just making sure you're paying focused, attention. You know what I'm saying? Because I can see the facial expression. For the people that's not on the radio, not seeing this, go to our YouTube channel. Okay, <laughs> Marriage Can Heal. And you can see how he acting over here. I'm not acting like anything. So, I just anyway, made a comment. But yeah, I just so made a anywho, comment. Anywho, a but, comment you know, that said, you know. But that, on the serious tip, you know, the world is really getting stronger and stronger about pushing their agenda on what they want our children to believe and what they want to learn, what they want to teach them and what they put in the schools and what they want to put into their minds even started from a young age. Mm -hmm. And I would say, you know, your first teacher is at home. You are your parents. You know, the mother and the father, you know, you're your first children teacher that they see that you're teaching them things. You're teaching them, you know, how to use the bathroom. You're teaching them how to eat. You're teaching them how to pray. You're teaching them how to just to do the normal things in life. And that's how to love what, the Lord. Yes. And that's what they're trying to take away from the young people by starting even young, young, young primary school. You know, I would say just three years old. Yeah. One, nursery. Nursery. They trying to, you know, push mm -hmm. their agenda on these kids and trying to just, just to take their whole minds away from Jesus. And I think we need to make sure we are hit strong for ourselves. Number one, and also bringing that to our children. I agree. Mm -hmm. And that's why I was saying, that's why the, to me, Christian values in a home is important. If you mm -hmm. have Christian values, like like you said, it starts with yourself where mm -hmm. you need to be, you know, because I, I struggle. I struggle with my devotions. I struggle with my walk of Christ sometimes. Sometimes I'm just like, I get so busy. I just I just keep going and going. And I'm like, man, I didn't even pray. Or, man, I need to stop and pray, you know. I, I We all struggle. You struggle. I struggle. Um, You know, you was... But, you know, one thing I had to put into my mind just the other day, I said, Lord, I know I know, I need to, because, you know, me, I, I have my own worship by myself. I can mm -hmm. be in the kitchen 
put on my music and I just start dancing or whatever, or I sit and I read the Bible and, and I just start crying because I just know that God took time to still have me here. He, he, you know what I'm saying? He consistent with waking me up. He's consistent with putting breath into my body. I need to be consistent in just showing him time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And if we think about it like that, we will make time because, you know, you never know when, when your opportunity will end mm -hmm. where you won't have that, that and that used to be That used to be my point when we had worship was mm -hmm. like, you all sit still during class. You all are quiet during class. But that's a different environment. Yes, I know it's a different environment, well, I know but in our home is. environment, it's a different environment, but in our home environment, we have to, as adults, incorporate that so that they can they can learn that mm -hmm. and at least be a little and be a little reverent, which they've gotten better at. They have be a little reverent, they and have. and when we we have worship, that's all. Mm -hmm. And they haven't gotten you know. better. I really do see that. Yeah. You know, and I, I just we're still working. Mm -hmm. And you know, just the other day, um, Kaya had told me that her teacher that works with her one of her teachers that work with her that was saying um she wanted she liked to talk to people about different religions and what they believe so she was asking kaya what do you believe in and kaya said i believe in jesus christ and you know hit the father you know god so she was explaining that to her and she was like oh so you and kaya was explaining how we how god made us how god made her and her family and so on and how he made everyone in the whole world so she, the lady with her, the teacher was very kind of um, curious about, you know, because I don't believe the Islams believe that God made them. I don't know if they, where they think they come from initially. I'm not sure. I have not. Um, I ever, haven't studied it. No, but, I'm not sure. Yes. But I, but anyway. Kyle, I believe in something with, I think, uh, Muhammad. Yeah. Some years ago, an angel prophet mm -hmm. came and talked to him mm -hmm. and gave him the Quran. Mm -hmm. And then that's far as I know, I don't know the rest of it on that aspect. Yeah. So Kaya went on to say, you know, how God made us, how he died on the cross for our sins and how she had got baptized in church and, you know, and, you know, how, you know, how she loved Jesus and Jesus is in her heart. And she was telling her that Jesus is in your heart as well. And so she was very interested in that. And, and Kaya was just telling me that. And I was like, wow, Kaya, you really... You know, then she tried to break down how, you know, the beginning, how God made the world from Genesis, so on. And she she did good. But as I was listening to what she had said that she said, uh, she just kind of um, missed a couple of points. So as we went home, she was like, you can read, you know, Genesis for me. So I thought we started out reading, you know, Genesis and everything. And I started, you know, explaining to her how Jesus made the earth in six days. And on the seventh day, he rested. Which she knew already. Which she knew already. But I would just kind of going through each one, just letting her know, you know, you know, the days of the week, how to, the first day of the week is Sunday, you know, and so on. So, you know, we kind of went through that whole scenario. So I said, next time, so now she, she, she has, she's just in my habit in my mind now. So next time someone asks me, I'll be able to explain to them what I know. Yeah. You know, so I think it's nothing wrong with reading the Bible over and over again. Cause you'll just be, sometimes. Who said it was wrong reading the no, Bible no, no, over and let over me finish. Again. No, I was making a statement. I was saying that I was telling her that it's nothing wrong with reading the Bible over and over and again, only because you, you never know. You may have missed something that, that may just come to be like, wow, I never knew it said that. Or maybe you read something that didn't understand what you was reading. And all of a sudden you just, you just be like, wow, I understand it now. Yeah, I know. You That's know, why we do read the Bible. Mm -hmm. We, we haven't read, we, we read the, we sometimes do devotions, but we, we talked about doing the Bible again. Yeah. And reading the Bible mm -hmm. um, more consistently. Mm hmm because that's the best Bible. That's the best storyteller of all times. It has yes. many stories and different mm -hmm. aspects of different things going on in there. I think Kaya's like favorite we, story is Genesis and talking about Noah and talking about in Adam and Eve and Eden. Like we, what you we know, talked just about. The whole thing. I know, but what we talked mm -hmm. about today with Meshach, Shirek, and Abednego mm -hmm. and worshiping the false idol mm -hmm. and the um, King Nebuchadnezzar making saying to bow down, and if you don't bow down, you will be punished. Mm -hmm. And it just had me thinking about today with the king being coronated and mm -hmm. the queen mm -hmm. and how people are worshiping them in that sense mm -hmm. and how, you know, we as, as, as Christians need to remember that the true king is, is God mm -hmm. in heaven mm -hmm. and that, you know, we have our heavenly place and eternal place waiting for us. Mm -hmm. If we just keep, you know, worshiping and believing in him yeah. and having faith in him. Mm -hmm. 
And we was talking about that. Yeah. You know, and no matter what fire may be put on us, God will protect us from it. He will protect us. If we have faith, we need to have faith and remember that. Yeah. And so that's what, you know, I, like I was saying, that's the, I think that's the main thing that teaching our children is the hardest thing because when we teach, we can have our worship, we can teach them about Christ. But when they go out there every day, going to school with these kids that we're learning. They're around unbelievers, yeah. Say what? They are around unbelievers. It's not even unbelievers. I think they're just around people that are just, you know, that are just, um, it's not, even, I'm trying to think, it's not unbelievers. It's more, they are non-believers, yes. But I mean, it's just more <laughs> just. What are you saying? No, because I'm, I'm not saying you're wrong in what you're saying by that I'm down around non-believers. I just mean just the the world that we live in is so is so is so secular. Like Christ is not even a after it's not even a thought in their head. For some and, people, right? For some people, so it's not even because a non believer, you know, to me a non believer be somebody that knows of Christ but doesn't believe in Christ. Right. But I feel sometimes here in the UK, a lot of folks don't even know of Christ. Mm. Does that make do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You yeah. can't you can't believe in something you don't even know about. Well, yeah. I can and see I, that. I, you know, that's what I believe sometimes. I believe, you know, so when they hear our children talking about it, they're like, what are you talking about? Like, mm -hmm. you know, like, what? What's that? I don't even know what that is. You know, so that's what I mean. That's what I meant by uh, it's not about non believers. I believe that some of them don't even know about Christ, don't know about any religion. Mm. That's what I mean. They don't even know about Church of England or Catholic or anything. They don't know any religion, mm -hmm. you know. And that's that's the difference of living out here in the UK that I found that than, than living in Bermuda or living in the states is that even if you lived in Bermuda or the states, you kind of know of a religion or you know of a denomination or of a of a Christian value, you mm -hmm. know. But not out, not here in the UK. I found in the UK it's not like that at all. Mm. That's what I've been trying to say. I've been trying to think about what I was trying to say, what I was trying, what I meant. And that's exactly what I meant. So, mm -hmm. like, yeah. Yeah, but as I, as you was talking about that, I was thinking about how they, you remember when they took prayer out of the schools, period. I don't know if it just happened in America or it happened, it happened everywhere. globally or whatever mm -hmm. like that. But it seemed like ever since they took prayer out of schools, it, unless you go to a private school and a Christian school, then that's different. Because you have prayer and everything, but I'm talking about public schools. It used to be where you can pray in school and everything, in class and stuff like that. Well, they took a lot of things out of the school. Yeah, so I think the agenda has always been there to to um, push what they're pushing now. I think everything just had its time and place when it was going to happen. You know, but so you're saying? talking about an agenda. I'm not talking about an no, agenda. I'm, I'm talking about in general. I'm talking. I'm not talking about the agenda of the LBQT. Or the lesbian. I ain't and, just and talking Jay about LGBT. It's a lot of other and, agendas and, out there besides and that. And I'm I'm not saying I'm no I'm talking about the gun agenda. They they have all these different um transgenderism. Um they have all the agendas. Um transgenderism is the word. Yeah, trans a trans yeah. I know transgender, but you said transgenderism. Transgenderism, yeah. ISM. Okay. Yes. Okay. It's a word. Look it okay. up. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. You love doing that to me. Yes, it's a word. Okay. I believe it's a word. Now you got me thinking it's a word. <laughs> yeah, it's a word. Yeah. Um, but not just I think it's like, you know, like learning your own to be yourself. You don't need nobody else to be like, you yeah. know, like there's a lot of self help people out there now. You know, well, yeah, like pastors. Oh, you know, you can be yourself, you know, you don't not need just nobody. Pastors, people, period. Well, yeah. I'm sorry, you can't people just throw people. it on the pastors now. No, that's true. My Rewind. apologies. I, I didn't mean pastors, I meant speakers. Yeah. So when I was talking, that's what I meant by more speakers, mm -hmm. self-help speakers, Yeah. you know, and, you know, oh, you could be what you want to be, you know, just like. They could be teachers. <sighs> yes, Todd, they could be anything. You just said that. Okay, yeah, go ahead. So why you keep trying to, that's what I'm talking about. That's what you've been doing lately. You've been go really, ahead, please. I'm not oh, hating. gosh, go ahead. You're going to make me get off topic. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Anyway, like I said. Just and you can what are you on your eyes see people yeah now <laughs> everybody come and look at the YouTube and see my wife just did anyway. let's talk about me <laughs> all right then mm. all right anyway okay anyway well you better but I, you know could I love you, you Peter could you finish your topic no because you know I love you 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 know I you know I love you to death but man oh man Woo. you can make it hard sometimes but God knows only God knows He knows He has us thank God for my wife who I love daily what. 
Could You're you the one that started. Could you finish your topic, Pedro? I was trying to finish until you kept ding with you. You anyway. want to keep saying how much you love me. Okay, thank you. Keep going. See, that's what I'm talking about. Right there. Mm-hmm. Anyway. I, I'm trying to remember what I said now because you made me forget my thought because you go into your little rolling your eyes and stuff. That's your anyway. age. That's not me. No, it's not my age, baby. <laughs> Sorry. You can, you, whatever. Like I said, we just have to just keep teaching our children about Christ and encouraging them to, to love the Lord and teaching them about how God good is for us and how good he is for us. Because in the end, you know, the world is going, the world is changing and it's not changing for the better. Mm-mm. So we have to just be steadfast and just teaching our children about Christ, about the Lord, our Savior, about um, anything that, everything that he has taught us to teach him. Because as he has put in, he, it's our duty to raise our children in the right way. Yeah. And then from there, when they get older, but that's what I was saying earlier. Like, I think them going through it now, when they get older, they have already kind of been in the world some, so they kind of know. In what sense? Because when they leave, the stuff they go, the stuff our kids are going through now. In school. In school. Mm-hmm. It's some of the things they will go through when they leave and go to college or go to a university. I think it's going to be even different than that. I know, I know it's not. I know it's going to be different, but it's gonna, some of it is going to be there. Mm-hmm. The agendas are going to be there. Right. The way of life is going to be there. The temptation. The temptation is going to be there. They have temptation now. You Just because they're I, I 12 know that. and, and the 14, bad influences? you yeah. don't think they, they don't have bad influence and temptation now? Yeah, I'm sure they do. Oh, you know, let's have the cigarette or let's have a drink of, or let's have a drink of some liquor. Mm-hmm. They have the temptation now. You know, they're just like our son was telling us just recently that a student that he went to school with had tried Babe. something. What? Anyway. Okay. What? Uh, I tried something and hurt themselves. Yeah. Okay. So what was wrong for me saying that? Anyway, like I said, there's nothing wrong with you saying it, babe. Okay. <laughs> like I said, it's nothing wrong with you saying it, babe. It's nothing at all. Um, what what you got like that for? Anyway, the temptation is going to be there, and the the thing is going to be there for for them to. Um, have to try to new, do new things when they get older. And that's why I was just saying, you know, I think that it's good that they are kind of going through that right now. And hopefully when they get older, they'll have a better chance of, of navigating through life or navigating through um, their Christian values when, those time, when that time comes, when they get older. Don't you think? Mm-hmm. Well, so now you're going to be quiet? I said, okay. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Okay. So like I say, you know, that's we just wanted to come on and talk a little bit about this and about just raising up, you know, just wanted to encourage folks that are um, maybe finding it hard. Maybe the children, maybe your child's giving you a hard time um, at home. And maybe they're getting into trouble. Oh, that, that's what I was going to say more than anything. Like, our, our kids, even with us doing everything we do, they still do wrong. They still make mistakes. They still get in trouble. They still, you know, do things that they know is not right sometimes. But I think our, our goal is to teach them that, you know, even though they made a mistake, God can forgive them, and then they can just try to do better next time. Try to... Encourage us, encourage each other, first off, and we encourage them that even though they may have made a mistake or even though they may have done wrong, that doesn't mean that God is going to leave them or forsake them because of that. And so, you know, I guess we want to just encourage the parents out there or um, whoever the caregiver is with your children that, you know, even though your children may do wrong, even though you know they may know better, we still make mistakes. As adults, we make mistakes each day. In our marriage, we make mistakes in our lives. And, you know, God still forgives us. So as our children, we need to remember that and and just try to be there for them when they're down and when they're up as God is there for us. So just remember that going forward when your child makes a mistake, even mm-hmm. if they know what they did is wrong, even though they know, because sometimes 
the pressure can be too much sometimes, even for the staunch Christian, even for the person that has total faith in Christ, even even they will falter or fail sometimes. So we just need to remember that going forward. Yeah, we do. <laughs> My wife is in her feelings right now. Oh, so <laughs> yeah, you are. So I'm glad that we're near the end of our podcast. Yeah, you are in your feelings, Todd, because you just stopped talking. I'm talking. You're, no, you're not. You you told you just sitting there looking at me like like you don't want to say anything. No, I would just I would just saying, you know, just being transparent here, you know, that, you know, we just have to be watchful uh, of things of our children and just different things like that. And just keep praying for them that God continue to lead them and help us to be able to keep them, you know. You know, keep encouraging our children, just showing them who God is through our lives. True. That's it. All pretty right. much. We want to thank you all for joining us today <laughs> on the Marriage Can Heal podcast. Mm-hmm. And as we said earlier in the show, please like and subscribe. And if you're on the radio, please continue to listen. We thank you for your um, comments mm-hmm. and we thank you for your support. And we ask that um, you will all have a blessed week coming up. That's right. And as we enter the bank holiday, yeah, enjoy, enjoy be the, safe, enjoy the time with the family, mm-hmm. and um, as we will hopefully enjoy our time with the family. If my wife doesn't, you know, get mad at me for something I did, I don't know. I probably do. So I'm a man. I'll do anything to, you know, it's natural. Mm. But you know, God has us, so it'd be okay. <laughs> but anyway, like I said, if you want to donate, you can go to pound sign marriage can heal podcast. I'm, I'm saying that wrong. You can contact us at the Marriage Can Heal Podcast at gmail.com. Or if you like, you can donate to our Cash App, which is the um, British Pound Sign, Marriage Can Heal 2, the number 2. Or at PayPal, you can go at Goddess Ministry. Or you could just, like I said, like and subscribe and share with others so we can get the word out there. And hopefully, we can help somebody else as we're helping ourselves. Again, thank you for joining us. This is Tara. This is Pedro. And this is Marriage Can Hill Podcast. Peace. Peace. Drop the beat now.